so we're going to look at a uh, power factor correction example with a motor. And um, a lot of times when we're given these examples, uh, uh, they're going to give us multiple uh, bits of information to figure it out. So in this case, we've got a 575 volt motor, and it's 200 horsepower and an FLA of 192 with a power factor of 0.75. So um, the 200 horsepower isn't really valuable information here because that always refers to the uh, power output of the motor and we don't know what efficiency this is operating at. So the best bet in this case is to figure out the apparent power of that motor by using V line times I line times root 3. So if I did that I would take 575 times it by 192 amps and times it by root 3 we're looking at about 191,218 VA. We know that the power factor of this motor is also given, so that is a power factor of 0 0.75. And so I can figure out the power of this motor by multiplying my parent power by 0.75. So the true power of this motor is 143,414. Now I can figure out the vertical component of my triangle or the lagging VARs that the motor requires to operate. And if I use Pythagorean theorem or if I wanted to convert that 0.75 over to angle and use sine times my apparent power, that'll work too. Either way, you should get around 126, 478 VAR. Now looking at this uh, circuit, the one thing that we can't really manage is what's doing the real work. So the rate of work uh, that this motor is doing is going to become the total true power of the circuit. That's something we can't change. That's what's doing the work. So we take that horizontal component of the motor triangle and we just put it over as P total on our total triangle. Perfect. So what else they want is they are telling us we're going to correct to 0.9. So I'm going to put 0.9 there. And based off the two values that we have in our triangle, we could go ahead and figure out the apparent power of the circuit now after it's been corrected. So I'll take my P total and I'll divide it by 0.9. So that works out to be about 159,349 VA. Five, nine, there. All right. Now the Q total, what's coming from the circuit, the lagging bars that are still coming, is going to, we could just use Pythagorean theorem. So S total squared minus P total squared and the square root that. We're going to, works out to about 69,459. All right, perfect. So um, what we're going to look at next is try to determine what's the uh, leading VARs or the QXC total that the bank is required to supply. So in this case, we have to look at the quadrant power of the motor and subtract off the quadrant of power coming from the circuit. The difference between the two? Well, that's the leading VARs being supplied by the capacitor bank. So basically, QXC total is going to be equal to the Q of the motor subtract QC total. Or sorry, Q total, I should say. Q total. And so that's going to be, if I take 126,478 VAR and I subtract off 69,459, we're going to come to about... 57,019. So 57019 VAR. All right. So the first question here, what would be the KVAR rating of the bank required to correct the circuit to 0.9? We're looking at about a 57 KVAR bank. All right. So now moving on to question two and three, we know that uh, 
we're going to have to figure out the vars per phase to answer those. So the vars per phase, we are going to go ahead and QC total is the same as saying QC of each phase times 3. So if I want to know the QC of each phase, I'm just going to take my QC total that we just figured out and divide that by 3. So the QC, to QC of the phase is going to work out to about 19,006 VAR. 19006 VAR. Okay, so that's the same whether it's Y or Delta. Right? Now, when we go, we've learned about our formula there, our new formula is XC is equal to our phase voltage squared. Divide that by the VARs per phase from our capacitor bank or the QC per phase. Well, if we go ahead and calculate the values of Y, we're first going to have to bring our 575 line voltage down to its Y phase voltage. So in Y, the V phase is going to be equal to the V line divided by root 3. So that's going to be 575 volt divided by root 3. And it comes to about 331.98 volts. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and use our formula now. So XC will be equal to 331.98 volts squared. Divide that by our quadrant of power per phase from our capacitor bank, 19006 VAR. And that's going to work out to be about 5.8 ohms. Now converting that over to farads, capacitance is 1 over 2 pi Fxc. And using the 5.8 in this formula, it's going to come out to be about 457 microfarads. Okay. Let's go ahead and try it out for delta now. We could probably predict this a little bit. We know that the capacitance is going to be one third of what would be in, in delta. So if you want to go ahead and try that out, 457 divided by 3, it's going to be about 152 microfarads, a little plus or minus a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and see if we get close to that. So same formula. XC is going to be equal to our phase voltage squared divided by the QC per phase. In this case, our phase voltage is the same as line voltage. 575 volt squared. Divide that by our 19,006 VAR. And that's going to come to about 17.4 approximately. And if we sub that into our capacitance formula, 1 over 2 pi Fxc, we're going to see that it's about 152.5 microfarads is what I got. So yeah, it's basically a third of what we ha would have to have in Y. Okay, so yeah, hopefully that helps out. We're going to do one more of these, and uh, we'll see you there.